I would guess that of all the Canadian players on the roster, you're probably the most excited for this, getting this chance to put on this jersey. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, didn't get a chance to play in, in Sochi at, at the Olympics. Was really looking forward to that. And then, you know, having the leg injury that year and then uh, working as hard as I did to come back and try to get ready for that tournament and, and it not working out, this is, uh, this is pretty special. I mean, if you ask anyone, anytime you put on uh, the Canadian jersey, it's, it's an honor. But uh, for me, I think there was a little extra motivation um, and excitement for this tournament, obviously being in Toronto too. Uh, a lot of friends and family are going to be there. And um, this, is, this is something I was looking forward to since being announced on, on the team. And, um, feeling healthy and, and ready to go, and um, I, I can't wait to get it going. You were given a ring. You were given a medal by Team Canada because you were named to the team. How do you view that? Do you wear them much? Do you look at them much? What do you do with them? Yeah, well, I, I wasn't given a medal. I think you, you had to, to play to get a medal, but just the, I mean, the class that Hockey Canada has to, to, to give me a, an Olympic ring is, is pretty special, and that's something that uh, I will cherish for forever. I had no idea that I was going to get that. I think we had a, a just a practice at the facility in Calgary, and, and Scott Salmon pulled me aside, and I had no clue what was going on. And um, he presented me with the ring, and you know that was probably one of the few moments in my life where I was speechless. To, to be honest, it was um, pretty cool. I mean, they didn't have to do that. I realized, you know, I didn't get a chance to go over there and play. Uh, just being named to the team was. Uh, an honor itself, but uh, for them to, to really go out of their way to realize, you know, the work that I had put in to try to come back to, to represent my country at the Olympics, I mean, I think they noticed that. Um, and like I said, it just shows the, the class that um, Hockey Canada has. There's something about Canada now at these tournaments. You look at the 2004 World Cup and the last three Olympic Games, the last four Olympic Games, Canada's won four of those five. And for one reason, it's obvious because there's great players in the country. But it also, it seems like a standard's been set. And all of you guys look at it and say, we're not going to be the team to lose. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it goes back to even World Juniors. I mean, I, I remember playing my, uh, my World Junior tournament in Canada having won, I think it was four or five consecutive, having not lost a game in three or four. We lost a game in, in, the, in the preliminary round, and, and we kind of felt the pressure of, oh, man, we better win this tournament now. We don't want to be the team that broke the record of consecutive wins and then consecutive tournaments, and, and thank God we won the tournament. But I think it stems from there. It's kind of ingrained as, as a Canadian hockey player that it really is gold or, or nothing. Um, and, and I know it's... Um, you know, for, for our nation anyways, that's the standard that, that, that's been set, like you said. So anytime there's there's that additional pressure, but it, it's a good pressure. It, it I think it elevates your game and, and the guys realize that. I know there's there's a lot of the core guys that have been on, you know, the last two, three gold medal teams. So um, they know what it's like. And for, for the guys that haven't had a chance to play it, I think we realize going in uh, what the standard is. And I think that um, that just elevates your game. When you think international hockey in Canada, What's your favorite memory? That I've played in or, or just, just in general? Even uh, I think for me, it was probably Salt Lake City. Um, you know, I was, uh, I think I was 12 years old at the time. And, um, you know, I had a minor hockey game later that afternoon. I think I was, we were all a little late because we wanted to uh, see that gold medal game, watch the ceremony. I mean, Canada, US, I mean, it was, it was pretty special. I remember even in warm up, I think we brought a little Canadian flag out and, uh, skate around the rink. I mean that that was that was pretty pretty cool. I mean a um, couple you know Joe Sackick, Steve Eisman, those guys. Uh, it was pretty special to to see, and um, that's probably the most fond memory that that I have. That's just ingrained, and and now sitting here today, getting a chance to to put on that jersey in, in a World Cup is is pretty special. You went through a lot last year. First of all, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I mean it, it was. Obviously, I think more frustrating than anything. I mean, just such a freak thing to, to happen at the end of the year where I really felt I was playing my best hockey down the stretch. It, it, it was definitely a trying year for, for me with, you know, the distraction of the contract situation and then having that injury at the end of the year. Um, I think just even getting back to play that game seven was a huge mental hurdle for me um, to know that I could come back and play. And this summer is just about getting obviously completely healthy, which, which I am, and I'm excited about that and have a great summer of training and obviously really looking forward to this tournament. Do you need blood thinners anymore? No, no, I've been, I've been off them for, for a couple of weeks now, so that was 
another obstacle in, in the summer was making sure everything was going smooth and in that regard. So um, I feel great and, mm -hmm. and, and excited. You also had another big decision to make, as you alluded to, the contract. Um, that 25 minutes, your signing, the Shea Weber, P.K. Subban trade, the Taylor Hall, Adam Larson trade, you're a fan as much as you are a player. Did you look at, were you aware of all of that and what you were part of? Yeah, to, to be honest, originally no, because, you know, when you sign a contract, you, you kind of have the, the agreement in place long before anyone else gets wind of it. So it was just a matter of signing the document. So I knew that, that I was taken care of. I, I remember, you know, being on the golf course that day with a couple of buddies and, um, we we're kind of out in the woods, so we didn't have great cell service. We got to a hole closer, I guess, to, to the cell towers, and then, you know, the, the social media starts blowing up. You get texts, you know, did you see that trade? Did you see this trade? So, again, you, you are a fan of the game. You're, you're excited to see what's going on. That's an exciting time of the summer for everyone, players included, with different signings and trades and no-move clauses kicking in. Guys might get dealt. So uh, it was pretty crazy. And to be part of that, where my announcement was right in the middle of that, too, uh, it, it was pretty crazy, but uh, you know that's that's the game now. I think, especially in, in this salary cap world, teams try to have to to make maneuvers and, and try to make their team better and, and move pieces and, and big pieces. That's probably the first time we've seen trades of that magnitude all come out at once, and I think we're going to probably see a lot more of that in the future. Was there ever a time you thought that you were not going to be a Tampa Bay Lightning? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, you, those thoughts definitely creep in your head, but. I think for me, going back to when I was first asked the question, you know, over a year ago, um, my answer was always the same, that I wanted to stay in Tampa. I knew my heart was in Tampa. Uh, I'm the leader of that team. We have a great young nucleus in, in, in our organization, um, and you've seen the success we've had the past couple of years. So when, you, when your mind starts to, to wander a little bit, I think you always come back to to those principles and for me it was always I always wanted to stay there was definitely moments where you thought well I don't think it's going to work out but um, I, I've definitely stayed true to my word throughout the whole process and I was glad that at the end of the day um, as long as you're happy with your decision which I am I think uh, it, it makes life a lot easier. Was there one text message or phone call that you got from someone that made you laugh throughout all of that as this decision was coming down? Um, I don't know. To be honest, it was pretty stressful. Um, you know, it, it's a fun position to be in, uh, no doubt, uh, and something that you, you work extremely hard for as a player to have that right. But um, there were a lot more serious phone calls and texts than there was funny ones. Um, you know, you really realize who you lean on in, in those situations, you know, whether it's former coaches, players, obviously immediate family and friends. but. Um, it's funny when you have to make a decision that big there's that list kind of shortens down and, and you make some calls and have great conversations and you just again try to make the best decision for yourself and your family and, and I believe I did that. A couple more for you. First of all I'm curious based on that answer who, who was great to you? Like whose advice did you look at and say this person really helped me? Yeah well I mean aside from from your agents and, and you know your parents and, and your loved ones I think you know Couple guy. I mean, Marty St. Louis is, is a guy that that I, that I trust and uh, obviously have a great relationship with. I mean, um, you know, Gary Roberts, uh, another guy. I mean, there's former players too that that I've played with in, in the past who are close friends. But um, you know, and it's just conversation. It's not them telling you what to do. It's maybe you bouncing some ideas off them and them just listening. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that that's that's helpful. But at the end of the day, the message is is always the same, and and it's the message. Um, you know, that, that I've always portrayed is, you know, you do what's best for yourself and your family uh, moving forward. And the position I'm in in, in Tampa, I, I truly believe is, is the right one and the, and the decision that, you know, gives me the best chance to, to win. And um, I want to be part of that. You know, I, I definitely um, enjoy being the captain and, and the leader there. And, and Tampa's really been my, my home away from home. I mean, I spent eight years. I can't believe it's been that long already. But um, I love it there, and, and I can't wait to get a chance to, to win a Stanley Cup there. Will you ever say which team made you think the hardest? <laughs> no. Um, again, I, I think the whole process, we did a great job of everyone involved. I mean, um, there might be people or teams that no one's even heard of, and, and that's just a, uh, a testament to, to the process and how professional everyone involved kept it. Um, but again, it, it, was, it, was, it was a cool experience to be part of. Um, you know, usually when you make a decision, the more options you have, the harder it gets. So, uh, you know, you learn that pretty quick. But um, again, I couldn't be more happy to, to stay and, 
in Tampa and, and really excited about the future we have there. Last one for you, and it, it's still Stephen Stamkos is a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning, but I'm wondering if it's a new person. No more discussions about contract, no more discussions, hopefully, and we all wish for your health. A new start, a fresh start, a different day, including the first time you put on the Team Canada jersey at this level. Yeah, it's exciting, and I think when you think about that, you know, and you put in that perspective, um, it, it's the truth. I mean, uh, last year, like I said, it, it was tough dealing with all that stuff. I tried to do the best I could to leave that stuff at home and come to the rink. And, you know, whether it's any adversities in life, I know it's an old cliche, but you do learn from it. It makes you stronger. You know how to deal with different situations. And um, I've, I've been through a lot the past couple of years, whether obviously with the injuries or the contract stuff, it helps you grow. It helps you grow as a player and, and especially as a leader. And um, I think I, I'm ready to take that next step and um, and hopefully, you know, bring a Stanley Cup back to Tampa.